Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, and I wanted to do a video on power. Everything to do with power and kind of the ins and outs of it. And so we're going to start off with just kind of the most basic power circuit under power here in the bottom left. You got your manual generator, which you'll start out with uh, early on. And you've got your regular wire here, which can handle one kilowatt of power. You can see that under here, max power 1000 watts. 1000 watts, same thing as one kilowatt. And you'll initially have the tiny battery, uh, which works, but the upgraded version is better, the big battery here. You, you can research this uh, pretty early in, on in the game. I recommend you only use these uh, kind of once you learn them. So you hook up a battery to a manual generator. So this is a power production. In the game, there's power producers and power consumers. Uh, the manual generator is one of those power producers. There's a bunch of others like a hydrogen generator, coal, natural gas, petroleum generator. And I'll go into those a bit later in this video, but to start out, you'll have the manual generator, batteries, and then you want to hook up things like uh, machinery that you want to use on these circuits. So something like maybe the uh, massage table. Now you can see it requires 240 watts, so we'll stick one there, and we can see if we click on the generator under power, we can see it uh, generates 400 watts. Manual generator is kind of special because it's the only one that uh, the duplicates can power, the rest are used resources. So it's it'll produce 400, um, and this massage table will consume 240. And if you click on the generator, you'll see battery recharge threshold. You can kind of move this dial around. It defaults to 50%. So it basically means if the battery falls below 50%, a duplicate will come along, get on the wheel and run if they're able to. And that assumes that under jobs, top right here, that they're, assu they're assigned to the power task. So we'll kind of bring in a duplicate here. I'm in debug mode just so I can show you things. So Stinky here will get on the wheel. Now one thing that's a little bit confusing when I first read this manual generator, I thought he would get on the wheel and stay on it until the battery hit 50%, but it doesn't work that like that. He'll stay on the wheel, he'll run until the battery gets to 100%, and then he'll get off. And then once the battery comes back down to 50%, he'll jump on the wheel again and fill the battery up to 100%. Now let's say we tried to put um, three massage tables on this circuit, or even two. Two massage tables, hook those up with a wire. Now if two duplicates got on these massage tables at once, the power draw would be 480 watts, 240 times two. But this manual generator can only generate 400 watts, so it wouldn't quite work. It would drain, it would use the battery, drain it down, and you wouldn't be able to operate two at once. But often you'll set up power grids where there's machines that won't be operating all the time. Now if you click on the wire you can see some interesting details, especially when the power overlay is on. So that's F2, that's this overlay up here. So you turn that on, you can see the consuming watts 240 and 240 and the production 400. And then the battery, it can hold 40,000 joules and I won't get into joules versus watts, but basically it's a storage of energy. So if you click the wire, you can see power produced zero over 400. So that's kind of like what's being produced right now over the total amount that can be produced. And then power consumed, so nothing's consuming it right now. And this line's really important, potential power consumed. So all the things that are on this circuit add up to 480 watts in terms of being consumed. And then it tells you the maximum safe wattage, which is a thousand watts on this regular wire. So if you happen to put um, even more machines on here, let's say you put uh, five massage tables and you click on the wire, you can see potential power consumed is 1.2 kilowatts or 1200 watts. Now, if five duplicates got on all these tables, uh, the power draw, the consumed power would be 1200 watts or 1.2 kilowatts and this wire is only good for a thousand watts so what you would get is the wire would start to break and the duplicates would have to go and fix it 
So that's kind of like, kind of burning out your wires. And the way to get around that is just to only have a maximum of a thousand watts in a, on a given power line. I generally don't recommend that you put a full thousand watts on one line. Uh, I try to keep them at 960, which you'll often encounter because things are usually in multiples of 120 or 240. So these four massage tables, um, you can see potential power consumed 960. So this is a safe amount to have on one uh, regular wire. Now this probably wouldn't run very well because you only have 400 watts of production. So if, ever, if it, all four people were on the uh, massage table at once, this wouldn't work very well. So you'd probably want to add a second or third manual generator. So now you have 1200 watts of production and 960 watts of consumption if everyone was using the tables. And one thing uh, important to, to know is that the only thing that will fry the wire is the consumers going over a thousand watts. It's okay if you have production that goes over a thousand watts. In this case, we'd have 1200 watts of production. It's fine, it won't fry the wire. If we look at the research tab, we can see power regulation here. Uh, you get the big battery upgrade, you get a manual switch and you get a wire bridge. And then after that is internal combustion, which unlocks two new types of generation, coal generation and hydrogen generation. And then there's some more advanced ones up here. Fossil fuels is natural gas generator, oil refinery, petroleum generator. And then there's some kind of ad advanced power regulation, which is the transformer, the heavy watt joint plate and heavy watt wire. So you'll notice the map starts with quite a bit of coal, not necessarily right around the starting area, but just outside of the starting area. And coal is pretty handy. If you look at the coal generator, it generates 600 watts and it generates a small amount of carbon dioxide as it runs. And the coal generator itself generates quite a bit of heat of 45 watts. So you probably want to put it in a cool area or have wheeze warts or something to cool it down. Uh, I have another guide on cooling and heat if you want to check that out. Now most power generation I make out of gold amalgam because that increases the overheat temperature from 75 to 125. But copper's fine, should be fine as long as you keep it cool. So we'll build one here. Now the duplicates have to manually pick up coal and bring it to this thing and it'll run out occasionally. Now the minimum amount of batteries that you want to attach to it is probably one and the batteries as well. If you have gold amalgam I would use it but if you don't, don't just use copper or iron. So one battery is enough to kind of charge this thing up but I think I've read that six is kind of the optimal. So yeah six batteries is kind of the optimal Otherwise, you basically have coal burning that's not going to good use. Now, if you have things that are consuming power on this kind of non-stop, let's say you had two, two or three pumps on it, like uh, liquid pumps, for instance, that's going to draw more power than the thing can handle. It's going to draw 720 watts. It only produced 600, so this probably wouldn't work very well but it would be generally a constant draw on this generator, which would be really efficient. And then they're only gonna kind of refill it with coal once uh, the thing gets drawn down. The thing I like about coal power is that it's kind of good for remote power. So if you're building kind of far away from your base, you can set up a coal generator, a few batteries, and usually an algae deoxidizer is what I end up building. And that way you can generate oxygen kind of where they're working and it's kind of a temporary thing. And then you can tear it down, deconstruct it. And along with the coal generator, you, the research for the hydrogen generator gets unlocked at the same time. This thing generates 800 watts, so a little bit better. And your main source of hydrogen is going to be the electrolyzer. This thing is what's ge going to generate most oxygen for your base and kind of mid game. And it also gives off hydrogen. So what you do is you suck it up with a gas pump and then you filter out the hydrogen using a gas filter. So that's the input, the filtered output, and then everything else, which is probably going to be oxygen, goes off to the base. You select on the filter hydrogen and then this thing would bubble up hydrogen and oxygen. This pump would suck it up 
and send the oxygen off to the base and the hydrogen off to the hydrogen generator. So this is a common setup. You may, may also find kind of big packets of hydrogen on the map and you can clear those out using a similar system without the electrolyzer and just pump that into this hydrogen generator. But same idea, you want, you want some batteries on it as well, one or more, to try to kind of store up all that power that you're generating. Now the natural gas generator, usually fairly early on you'll find a natural gas uh, geyser like this. So you do something like this, maybe out of granite, you build a little room around it, like this. You might want to put an airlock so the dupes can get in and out. And then you'll put in a gas pump made out of gold amalgam. And you may or may not want to filter because there might be other gases in here. Hopefully there's not. Um, but if there is, you can filter it out. So gas pump, you'll have to hook up the power. Um, and then ventilation, you'll need a gas pipe coming out off to your natural gas generator. Now, like I said, you might want to filter uh, just in case until you have until you know for sure that this room is completely natural gas. And then you'll want to build a natural gas generator under power. This thing generates 800 watts of power and about 20 watts of heat. It also drips away polluted water and as well it uh, gives off carbon dioxide. Now this you want to build out of gold amalgam if you can because it'll overheat at a lower temperature and you'll also want to have cooling for it either build it in an ice biome or by or have a bunch of wheeze warts around it or cool it in some way because these get pretty warm and the most simple setup is just to have one so you have a gas pipe send the natural gas in sorry in in this way this is the input i always get this mixed up so the input is this white one, and then the output is where the CO2 is going to come out. And you'll send that off to wherever you want to deal with the CO2. You might want to send it to Slicksters to eat it up. You might want to use a, a carbon skimmer, which is this thing under oxygen. The carbon skimmer takes in clean water and spits out blue water, but it sucks up all the carbon dioxide around it. So one option is to send it to a room or send it to an area that has these carbon skimmers. Or like I said, you send it off to uh, Slicksters, which are found at the bottom of the map. They're like little creatures that eat CO2 and produce crude oil. Or you might just want to send the CO2 off into a big pit and deal with it later. So you'll have your CO2 pipe out, natural gas in. Now you'll have to kind of prime this system. And by priming, I mean you'll have to get the pump started in some way. So either you could power that with coal power or maybe manual power. So we'll put a dupe in there with some oxygen and they'll get the pump going. So here's the natural gas coming in and the CO2 coming out. And the polluted water just drips on the floor. So instead of um, bu building regular tile, you might want to build a mesh tile instead underneath. That way the, CO, uh, the polluted water will drip through. And often what I'll do is I'll build like a little catch basin underneath and let it fill up. And then you can pump it out and use it for other things. Because the polluted water is a good resource. A common thing to do is to put in a liquid pump and send the polluted water off to a fertilizer maker. We'll put one in here under refinement, fertilizer synthesizer, sorry. And it has one input which takes uh, polluted water. It's kind of like that. I'm gonna make our little catchment area a little bit tinier here. So we can see polluted water on the ground. There's, there's about two kilograms so far. And this will need power. So we'll just hook that up there. And really we should have a few batteries on here as well. One's enough for now. So now we could actually get rid of this and it should be kind of self-sufficient because this natural gas generator is running, um, powering the battery, powering the pump, powering this pump. So if we hook up the power for this fertilizer synthesizer, 
what this thing does is it it uh, takes some polluted water and makes fertilizer for you which you can use for uh, plants but it also gives off natural gas so this room eventually will fill up with natural gas one natural gas geyser will run about I would say three of these natural gas generators you might get four out of it and you may get one or two of these on your map so let's say you wanted to build a really big giant power plant and you had used up all your natural gas geysers you're kind of running tons of natural gas generators and you used up all the natural gas another way to get more natural gas is to build a bunch of fertilizer synthesizers and generally three fertilizer synthesizers will be enough natural gas to run one natural gas generator so in theory you could build as many natural gas generators as you wanted and supply them with natural gas now you want to get uh, your fertilizer synthesizer to kind of pressurize the room with natural gas before you start consuming it otherwise things will kind of fall behind and I'll show you a kind of a bigger version of this so this isn't my design I saw someone else build this um, and it's using that 3 to 1 ratio so we've got 15 fertilizer synthesizers filling up this room with natural gas we've got airflow tile in between and then we've got five natural gas generators they're dripping down the polluted water and we're sending that polluted water up with a pump to all the fertilizer makers and then we're taking all the natural gas out of this room down here with a pump we're filtering out uh, natural gas and sending it to the five natural gas generators now the way you kind of set up the piping for these uh, has a little bit of trickiness and I'll just show you that right now so let's say I did it like this all the outputs I sent okay the most natural thing to do I find when I when I first started was to do this send one gas pipe go like this and send it to an output vent now you'll see some problems are starting here if you hover over the natural gas generator you'll see generator idle generator generator idle now what's happening here is that the co2 is going to getting blocked because you're all sending it in one big line there's actually no co2 coming out of this generator right now so a more common approach is to do something like this is to send a little bit of a loop something like this and then you send it all out one way now this one's turned off right now but if you look at these five or these four now you can see they're not idle they're running full bore same kind of same kind of thing for the input if you just do it in one big line it doesn't work as well so you have a little bit of a kind of a gap this this isn't showing up correctly this is a debug mode problem but now if you had done this all with regular wire you'd have big problems because the wire can only handle uh, 1000 watts so even two natural gas generators if you had regular wire if you had a bunch of consumers on that wire like uh, five massage tables for instance uh, using this the regular wire this one you would get uh, broken wire so what's being used here is heavy watt wire and that's under power this stuff right here heavy watt wire so the capacity of heavy watt wire is 20 kilowatts instead of one kilowatt like the regular wire now you generally don't want to use this uh, near your duplicates because it has a really bad decor decor minus 25 and it has a six tile radius there's an upgraded version of this the heavy watt conductive wire same same capacity but less decor radius and less or only 20 minus 20 decor instead of 25 so generally for these kind of big power grids you want to use heavy watt wire and this is all working because uh, we've used heavy watt wire everywhere or conductive heavy conductive wire we've got a lot of batteries up here as well kind of sucking up all this power because we're not really using it right now the way I usually do it is to build a stack and I usually do it in a cold area I only usually build them kind of in a stack of one but I just keep adding to the stack and I usually have my polluted water collection at the bottom like this so all that polluted water is dripping into a collection area and then you can suck it up with a liquid pump and I like this because it keeps the uh, piping nice and neat and tidy and you just keep expanding up and up and up 
but some people do it like this. They'll do them three wide, two or three or four. I just find that the piping gets kind of messy. Because you're going to have output pipes like this and input pipes, something like that. So all your output is going out, CO2 out, and natural gas in. So we can see if we put on the power overlay, this power grid is producing 3.2 kilowatts and the potential power being consumed, actually all these fertilizer makers are consuming power is 2.4 kilowatts. But let's say we wanted to use some of this power now that we've got this big giant power grid. We wanted to use some of this in the base. Now we could lead heavy watt wire off to the base. Let's say the base was, uh, where is our little base? Kind of got one here. So there's kind of two options here. You could lead heavy watt wire kind of to the outside of the base. And then you could convert it using a power transformer. Now these things have two sides and you can rotate the building using O. And it has an input side. This is where the heavy watt wire goes in. Like this. So this would be from your main power grid. And then on the other side, you use the regular wire, which is a thousand watts. And that'll go into your base and then you can hook it up to uh, whatever machinery you want, up to a thousand watts. Now it's common to put a battery on kind of both ends of this to kind of buffer power, one or more batteries. I already have a bunch of batteries kind of connected to the entire grid so that this part's actually not necessary. But having a battery on this side as well is kind of useful. Now let's say you had to go through a wall. You can't build heavy watt wire through a wall. If you try, the game won't let you, right here. One way around that is this new thing they added, the heavy conductive joint plate, and you can rotate it. So you want to set it up like this, and that way you can build a wall, like this acts as a wall, so you can go through the wall with the power. Pretty useful. I also tend to build my transformers just on the outskirts of my base. I use uh, airflow tiles so the heat can escape because these things generate heat as well. And then I usually build one or many of them and I'm going to rotate these so that they're facing the right way. So you might have something like this. Heavy watt wire coming down like this. Hooked up into these transformers and then regular wire coming off the other ends into your base. And each one of these wires could handle up to a thousand watts. Now these things do warm up, heat production 5 watts. So you want to either put them in an ice biome or have wheeze warts cool them or have some kind of liquid cooling. Now there's also conductive wire which is new and that's kind of, it requires refined metal and it's kind of like a, a, a deluxe version of the regular wire and it hold, it can handle 2 kilowatts instead of 1 kilowatt. It's a bit prettier as well. That saves you from having, you know, so many of these transformers because you can you can have up to two kilowatts of power uh, consumption on these. Something like this. You would never build something like this, but uh, if you wanted a bunch of heat. <laughs> Let's just check the uh, power consumed 1.3 maximum safe wattage to... Let's fry the wire. Let's... Uh, so now we've got, oh, see we've got overload damage. And that's because we've got 2.6 kilowatts being used and the, the wire can only handle two kilowatts. So the dupes will come along and waste your copper or gold or whatever it was made out of and fix that wire. This is also gonna get very hot here. <laughs> But the wire just broke here, you can see. So you got to keep that wattage under 2 kilowatts. Now it should be safe. Yeah, 1.8. And to get refined metals for these uh, special wires, there's a couple ways. One is the rock granulator. It's kind of the early, cheaper way to make it. And then later on is the metal refinery. If you look at the rock granulator, you can see if you put in copper ore, you'll get 50, 
50 kilograms of refined copper, so the yield is only about half. But if you use the metal refinery, you'll get a 100% yield. So you'll get 100 kilograms of copper from the copper ore. This thing requires 1200 watts of power, which is quite a bit. And it requires a water input and output. Whereas this thing, way less power usage, and it only needs a duplicate to use it. So I generally just use this because there's tons of copper on the map or iron and they can find the refine the copper so that's how you get uh, refined metals now sometimes you'll have um, you'll have a mess of wires let's say you wanted to get you had a wire pre-existing wire but you wanted to cross over it. to do that you use a wire bridge just like this and that'll let you kind of jump over this wire without them mixing there's also a switch um, I actually never use these, but it lets you turn off on and off power grids. So anything downstream of this switch, let's say you had three massage tables on the end, and if you click this, turn off, it'll just turn off everything that's, you know, consuming power on it. The alternative is just, just to disable the machines or to destroy the wire. Now there's one last uh, power producer, the petroleum generator. This thing's a beast. It gives off uh, two kilowatts of power, requires petroleum, and you get petroleum from refining oil using the oil refinery, which is also a bit of a power beast. It requires 480 watts. So you send crude oil into this thing, petroleum comes out, and you can put it in the storage tank or you can send it right in here. Now this thing gives off natural gas and carbon dioxide and this thing gives off a ton of polluted water, a ton of carbon dioxide, and a lot of power. It's kind of a late game way to make power, and I generally don't use it that much. I stick to natural gas for most of my most of my power. So my base load power is natural gas. My kind of remote or backup power is coal. For very small jobs, I'll use the manual generator. When you initially build your base, you know, you'll have a bunch of levels, probably four, two to four tiles high, something like this. You want to plan out your power plan. So if you know you're going to have things that are using power on each level, it pays to oops, run the kind of run the wires in a nice tidy way. So a nice tidy neat wiring. And that might lead off to your transformers. So you might have something like this where this is your base over here. This is your kind of transformer station and the wiring display is not showing correctly but you can kind of see there's one coming off the little end of each of these transformers and then off into your base into nice tidy rows Other, otherwise you get uh, you get a wiring diagram that looks like this <laughs> maybe not that bad but you can get a lot of if you don't plan things out you can get a lot of uh, overlaps and ugliness in my bases, though, I generally don't have that much power consumption in the base itself. Most of my power consumption is in my oxygen production, which I keep outside of the base, and I use heavy watt wire everywhere, so. The final thing I'll mention is this power shutoff, and it's used to turn on and off circuits using automation. So you might have something like a thermo sensor and connect it up with automation wire. Automation wire being completely different than power wire. So you might have something like this, where you got a thermal sensor, and if the temperature drops, yeah, the temperature drops below, say, 20 degrees, this thing will turn on, or turn off, I should say. So you want to kind of swap it. So now it's on. If you look at the automation overlay, you can see it's green. That means this power wire is going to be on. Now this is a bad example because the space heater itself has automation that you could connect this thermo sensor to. But it's basically a way to turn on and off power grids using automation. I actually, I've actually never really used this much, but I could see where it could be useful. That's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I uh, hope you guys, I uh, hope this helped you guys. If you got any questions, just let me know in the comments. Anything I missed, I'll try to put in the comments.
And as always, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.